What's up, everybody? Welcome to Gamma Ray Live, hosted, or excuse me, brought to you by Nongshim Noodles and Skybound. We are here at the Summoner's War, San Diego Comic Con 2018. That's a lot of information. Panel, <laughs> we've got a lot to cover today. It's going to be an exciting day, but first I want to know, like, because I see people on their phone already, how many of you are grinding Phimon right now? <laughs> like, there's people already playing the game as they're listening to the panel live. Uh, but yeah. let's kick this off. Let's jump right into this because we've got a lot to cover. There's a lot going on, and I'm very excited about it all. So let's just go down the line, introduce yourselves, and tell us what you do, and tell the folks at home a little bit about yourselves. My name is Catherine Winder. I'm the executive producer for the Sumner's War franchise. Clappity clap. Yeah, yeah. yeah Catherine! <laughs> That's a big deal. That's a big deal. <laughs> Thank you. Not as big a deal. I'm uh, Wilson Tang. The franchise art director. Oh, just in charge of what it looks like. That's kind yeah. of a big deal. <laughs> I'm Krista Kellaway, and I'm the franchise producer for Summoner's War. Mm. Keeping it in check. All right. <laughs> and uh, I'm Casey Lee, vice president of Game Welcome to Us USA. Oh, no big deal. <laughs> no big deal. This makes the game. <laughs> so, why are we here, Catherine? Just. Give us, a, give us a rundown. What is, what is happening? What is bringing us all together here? Well, Sumner's War, yes. um, which is a mobile game mm -hmm. that was created in Korea and has what, 80 million, 80 million? 80 million, 80 million downloads. downloads. Last that we give or take a million. Yeah. 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 Million. And a million players every day. So every day? Really impressive. Yeah. Well, that's okay. Amazing. And Skybound, what is, what is the unison here? It's a partnership. Um, actually, last night we had our one-year celebration anniversary oh, wow, um, of this partnership. We met here at, in San Diego at Harbor House. Um, the, the Come to Us executives were speaking with one of our executives, his name's Dan Murray, about how Skybound had taken The Walking Dead and extended it into a multi-platform global franchise. Mm. And they had similar ambitions with their game. Their, their um, fans were looking for more content and said, you know, figure this out. And so they have a team trying to uh, extend it into all different areas. So, so they were talking to us about how, did that, how does that work? That is, a, that is a large undertaking. It is. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't, I'm not even sure I've ever even heard of that. That's so impressive. So now that we've got this partnership, it's coming together, we've got plans. What are those plans? What's coming up for us? What's on the docket? Hey, well, we're here together, Skybound, come to us, uh, showcasing Sumner's War. And uh, we're here at San Diego. We have a booth. Yeah. We've You've got, got a, whole a house. bunch. Harbor House. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're here at Harbor House. Um, there's a claw machine at the booth. The Sumner's War booth is located at uh, booth 2629. We're right, right beside the Image Comics uh, booth and Marvel on the other side. And it's been a blast. Yeah. Um, and we have a bunch of online content that we have uh, we've been pushing out through our Skybound Games uh, uh, YouTube channel and also on the Sumner's War YouTube as well. So you haven't been very busy. It's been a light week. <laughs> a few things yeah, going on. I can imagine. Um, so tell me a little bit about this team. You, you all have pretty different various backgrounds and you've united. You're sort of a dream team. I, did, I read the bios, I read the Wikipedias, I went deep on the internet, and I want to know how this came to be. How did this form? I'm going to throw it over to um, this young man on my right, uh, <laughs> Wilson. <laughs> yeah, Wilson. Uh, Wilson and I met at Lucasfilm a number of years ago, I'm working Casual. on a very small property uh, that we were adapting in different forms of content. And when we started to figure out what the show and the, and the universe could look like for Sumner's War. He was the first person I reached out to. And so you want to talk a little bit about your adaptation background? Because yes, sure. it's pretty Tell impressive. Us a bit about that. Yeah, I've got a pretty checkered pass, um, <laughs> <laughs> including a film um, um, with Industrial Light and Magic, and then um, console games, and then mobile games with Kabam. Uh, I had co-founded a studio. So I think my career has kind of spanned all types of properties and kind of how to take uh, the best of one and kind of take it to, um, extend it to other mediums, right? Yeah. So when Catherine kind of came to me, and of course I, I anytime Catherine knocks, I usually answer. <laughs> so how was this informed that you made it so? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And she came to me with this, um, you know, awesome property that's um, loved by so many people all over yeah. the world. And it's, you know, it's not just numbers, it's, it's um, extremely global. 
And, um, you know, she said, well, we have this little challenge and we want to really kind of take it up. Well, blow it up, really, basically. So, um, we a lot. And, um, <laughs> and you know, she introduced me to the rest of the team, the Casey and John and Jay, and the rest of the Come to Us team. So, it seemed like it was the right ingredients um, mm. to make something awesome. Yeah. So, actually, uh, Casey, I was wondering if you could tell me a little bit about that. Uh, you wanted to make something awesome. Why? Why? How did this come? Like, what was going through your head here? Yeah, that was like, it's a very good question. It really <laughs> comes down to you know our fans. Yeah. Right? Uh, everything we do is it's always for our fans. Um, and when we asked our fans, you know, what is it that you guys want? You know, they really just wanted more of the Summer and Sword universe. <coughs> they wanted to interact with our Summer and Sword characters as well as the world that it, it's in, mm -hmm. um, but outside of just gaming. And to, to that point, we were only doing Summer and Sword on mobile. Um, so it was about how can we give our users, our fans, you know, an opportunity to interact with this brand outside of just gaming. And that's when we kind of decided, okay, you know, what are some of the key elements that we have here where our fans consume content the most? And it was, whether it was films, comics, animations, and it just made sense, right? It was expanding out of gaming and just getting into all of these different verticals of entertainment. And so, you know, it was really simple for us. We're just listening to our fans at the end of the day. Um, and that's just what they wanted. Did you ever think it would come to this? When you started no. out, it was <laughs> no. just it was just a mobile game <laughs> with a dream. One day, yeah, yeah, it was. It really just you know we were so focused on how can we get content quickly enough so that our fans don't complain, right? <laughs> um, and it was just hard, you know. These these people, they're 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 you know going through this content so easily because yep. I'm not I'm not a pro gamer like them, so it takes me quite a while. Um, but some of these people are just whizzing by all of this content, so we were just busy trying to you know, make new stuff that they could play. Um, but we never even imagined that it would get to a point where, you know, now we're looking at you know, films and comics and animations. It's like, it's so different from what we started with. And it's, it's actually a blessing in disguise. Like, we really enjoy it. And exciting. Films. It's so exciting. It's exciting. I know when I mentioned it to a lot of our friends who previously weren't that familiar with the property, the first thing they said was, oh, is that the one with the billboards everywhere? Yeah. Like, they know it. Like, even if they don't play it, they know it. So that's really exciting. Congratulations on that. Um, so, uh, Catherine, I want you to tell me a little bit about how you go about, because you have, you've got a, ba you've got a past. You've done a lot of amazing <laughs> things. You've got a past. Uh, that uh, sounds good or not. Yeah. Uh, you've pass. worked on some major projects, what I mean. I, it's I not do. shady, although, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so how do you go about selecting the next project to work on, and how did this sort of come to be for you? Well, it's, it's a number of things, but for us at Skybound, what's important is that we see there's a passion mm. um, and there's possibility. And additionally, there's a fans first kind of mentality. And so when we met with the Come To Us team here at Harbor House last year, I was, I was really impressed with just the fundamental alignment in terms of our values as companies because we're all about the creator and putting the creator in the center of what we call our, uh, our wheel of awesome. Hmm. And the idea is that we, it, it's very important, and this comes right from the top from Robert that, and, and Dave Alpert, our partners, that the creator has a say in the outcome of, of their property. That it's not like we hand off a property and um, a, a creator loses control, but rather drives where the, the property goes. Uh, and the fact that Come To Us was really focused on keeping the fans engaged and happy, expanding beyond, and ensuring that the creative integrity was maintained with their, um, their creator in the center um, felt right for us. Right. And the fact that this property was so massive in, um, in Asia and growing in North America was a really exciting opportunity and challenge for us to take it into all sorts of forms of content and, and work as a team and a, and a partnership. I find that so fast. Just the, the idea of like it being so huge in Asia and then coming to the West. Has, has there been any particular challenges with that transition at all? Has it been or is it just sort of like the community vocalizes so well that you know exactly what they want? I don't know that you can ever know exactly what they want, but um, what's fantastic is we have a constant open dialogue with the team that come to us and, and Sumner's War. It's a, again, it's a partnership and together we're uh, 
figuring out how to best take this forward, starting with a universe Bible that we've yes. written, yeah. and, and uh, with John Zerplatten as our franchise head writer, he's, he's done that, and we've used that as our foundation and baseline that we're then taking all these other extensions and building off them. I, I would imagine that building that Bible must be a challenge in and of, its, uh, in and of itself. Um, so, now we know. We know sort of the foundation, how this is coming to be. We know the challenges that are ahead of us. But Wilson, I want you to now tell me, how do you, how do, you do that? How do you visualize that? I mean, it just seems like it's so overwhelming, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I think, um, <laughs> you know, the lucky thing is that um, the game itself, Summoner's War, has such a strong kind of visual identity. And um, I think the identity is um, that it's got a huge family of characters that's really diverse in terms of who each character appeals mm -hmm. to. So that's something that we held on to. And I think um, as with all the other projects we've ever walked, worked on, um, you know, Catherine is, I, I've learned a lot from Catherine and we start with the characters first. So you go down and find the characters that people are most um, Yeah, how do you, how do, you do that, to? by the way? How do we do how that? Are you well, picking, we we like work with Casey. Yeah, Casey. Yeah. Team, yeah. Right? So who, who are the ones that... Yeah, let's go through I mean, this. Again, it, it's, it goes back to the fans, right? It's, it's, you know, we ask them how do they want to consume this content? And you know, we, we noticed that not all, the fa uh, not all of our players are, are ch little children. They're, they're young adults, they're yeah. adults. Um, so they want at least some level of emotional attachment as well from their characters. And you know, summoners were being around summoners and monsters. Um, it was just, it was an easy decision for us that we wanted to kind of focus on these summoners because first of all, our players are summoners. Mm -hmm. um, so we wanted them to relate to these characters. And uh, <coughs> utilizing these summoners, we're able to kind of touch those human emotions mm -hmm. that, are, that are tied to these, I guess, epic dramas. Um, and so we wanted to create story around that and make sure that, you know, these are some, this is a, it has to be something that they are interested in, yeah. right? And they can relate to on, on more of an emotional level. Um, and so, again, like, this is something that we can't do through the game. So we chose to do this on um, all, all of our adaptations. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I find that uh, when, I'm, when I'm searching, because I, I became part of the community. I, di I dive into the Reddit <laughs> once in a while. And I noticed that there's just uh, a lot of the characters that tend to rise to the top are the ones that are popular in the meta in like the competitive meta and stuff like that, or the ones that beginners tend to gravitate to to get them to the later parts of the game. Is that something you take into consideration? Like, oh, this monster just happened to be a key monster in the development of the game, and now they're going to be a main character. Yeah, I mean, it's only natural, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. We want to pick characters that are already popular with our user base. Um, and so, you know, it's not only just within um, like these animation efforts or, or the film adaptation, even when we're doing marketing or if we're doing uh, any type of video content, we always tend to kind of focus on monsters that are a very key part of the game and people, a lot of people have already. Um, also, people like to kind of see what they can't achieve as well, right? So then you want to show them that main monster that everybody wants. Right. Um, so then it's, it's just the balance of that and, and we really do kind of enjoy picking these monsters, knowing that the players will appreciate it when they see it uh, outside of the game. And, well, one thing I want to add to that, yeah. though, is what happens when you're adapting like this is what we've done and I've done on other projects, like, for example, Angry Birds, when we were yes. developing it, there's so many characters, each with their own iconic core traits that are important to the fans. And what we did for Sumner's War is we went in and we identified which characters uh, made sense to build this world and universe around and to dimensionalize and give personalities to. Um, and through that, we also found some characters that may not be quite as popular, but we brought them into the mix. And then this adaptation, as we start going out into the world with some of these different forms of content, will then build those characters. The attachment to Yeah, them, so yeah. You, you create this content kind of ecosystem that feeds on itself and brings in you know, the um, development of new characters and new audience members and all of that. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, I, I think different from a game, when you try to develop a long-term narrative, you're looking for chemistry mm -hmm. between the characters. Um, you know, so y it's not necessarily just the most powerful characters or uh, the ones that everybody wants. You want to throw in a little bit different uh, mix of characters so that you know that you can craft interesting stories around them 
for a long, long time, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And, and just even on diverse. a base level, Sumner's War, it's, it's a world that is so rich with characters and, and there's so many monsters and there's a magical element and you know there's just so much to dig into. I can't wait to see where this... Yeah. You never know, right? Yeah. It could be, any li- it could be a monster <laughs> that got popular because it was a dank meme. <laughs> right, yeah. like you've got to capitalize or on maybe, it. Or <laughs> maybe, maybe we'll create some new characters oh. that end up going into the game. Who and knows? Then, that's not in the game, and then you get it as yeah. DLC, and everybody loses their minds. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, that's, that's what's so awesome. <laughs> he was like, "Yes." <laughs> yeah, it's like it's what I'm <laughs> saying. It's like you know, some previously for us, it, we were limited to the game. Like it had to be yeah. a good monster within the game for us to highlight it. But then now we're, we get to play around with, you know, some of these characters might just have a personality that you like. Mm. Um, it might be somebody that you just kind of relate with, and then it automatically kind of helps them shine. So then um, that's what's really awesome for us. Because then now we could, for us, every character is important, right. right, as a creator. And so when we see that our, our users are, you know, sharing that same excitement for all of our characters, it makes us even happier. Um, and so this is an awesome opportunity for us to utilize that. Um, so we want to highlight every character if possible, and, and I think it's 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 really awesome. Everybody has their own, right? Yeah. Like you kind of get attached simply exactly. because they help you beat a boss. It's not relative to the narrative, but personally, it has. <laughs> well, and, and some some areas of content extension will be able to give certain characters a lot of attention, mm. and that's what's really exciting. Mm. So you build you build this um, narrative for a group of characters, and then you start spinning off and building other narratives and groups of characters and, and giving them all that extra attention that you typically can't in one form of content only. Yeah, and I, you know, I find this really interesting because I feel obviously um, adapting you know, IP to the big screen is so popular right now, especially in comic books. And there's always you know, the fan perspective. They're always worried that somewhere in the machine, they're going to mess up what makes that character so special. But it's interesting to hear this because obviously you guys are massive, 80 million unique downloads and a million players a day. There's so many people invested in this. And yet it sounds like you're, you're it's, it's like we're, we're caring a, a, about it at a grassroots level. Like this is so personal to you guys and to the yeah. community. And it's fun to kind of get a little bit of a glimpse behind the curtain, so to speak. Um, so tell me now, you, you know, you, you've kind of formed this, this, um, this bubble, you know, you, the framework you're trying to work within, how far do you allow yourself to deviate or, or to uh, sort of expand on any particular monster who before pre- probably had nothing? Well, like there's, there's a lot, there's of, a lot of discussions. In some cases, we don't. Uh-huh. And in others, it's really important to break some rules mm. and, uh, and, and deviate a little bit from the game. And that's a constant conversation, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, I think... Um, you know, usually when we approach a, char- uh, a project like this, we start by pushing a little bit harder. So you, um, you know, later on we'll see some art and um, you'll see how we try to explore <laughs> a little bit. We kind of, you know, see how um, how far we can push, and then inevitably we pull it back a little bit because at the end of the day, you don't want to lose the fans, right? Uh, who you know love and play with these characters day in and day out all over the world. So I think it's a it's a little bit of push and pull, and it's uh, depending on where we are in the project. Yeah, and you want to make the fans happy for sure and keep them engaged, but we're also looking to expand and find other fans that may not play the game right. but are going to discover the content and the characters, <laughs> right? And that will then come back and, and maybe play the game or maybe they'll just watch the show or read the comic book. It's hard to know. Yeah. And that's where you've got this fine balance back and forth of trying to figure out what makes sense and what's best for the franchise overall as opposed to one form of content. So will all this media sort of boomerang back and affect the game as well? Casey. Okay, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I'm not going to well, make any we promises. Will see. We'll, we'll see. see. We'll see if it does. Um, <laughs> it would be cool, right? It would be. It would definitely be cool. My guess yeah. is it will. <laughs> That's what we hope. Any yeah. tips over there? <laughs> <laughs> I see you. All right. All right. Hey. I saw that no look. spoilers over here. No spoilers. Uh, except we are going to have a little bit of a spoiler. I heard we have some artwork that we can that's right. Uh, can we? Can you sort of walk us through what we're about to see? Sure. Um, are we, uh, should we wait for the slides or? Yeah. yeah. Uh, how do you guys want to do the slides here? <coughs> Why don't we talk about we while we're waiting for the slide how the how process. we uh, okay, yes. how we okay. went about this and, and tried to find a look because I think that's really interesting. Okay. I mean, yeah. you know, um, it's a collaboration, and it's a collaboration between you know Skybound and. The States and Skybound in Vancouver, Canada, and come to us in Korea. It's a really diverse team. And so um, we tried to bring together a really diverse group of artists. 
literally, literally from all over the world. So we've got artists from uh, we start, Australia. We had Australia, <laughs> Singapore, uh, Canada, America, America Paris, France. Yeah. Uh, so we started wide. We went all over the place, and we said to people that we we thought were fantastic artists, just give us give here's some characters, yeah, and just give us your ideas. Go for it. No rules. And and there we were able to get a whole bunch of different ideas to yeah, start absolutely. from. Absolutely. Created a wide palette, right? Yep, and um, you know it's a little bit like jazz, <laughs> you know, and um, you know it could spin out of control. But luckily, we did not spin out of control. No, things came in, and you know we started honing and crafting it. And um, so I think that's kind of generally our strategy is to find, you know, kind of like what I think everybody here we assembled the best team, and so within the art world, we assembled the best team from everywhere, and kind of nudge them and shape them and push and pull until we find. You know, uh, we developed the characters into a way that we um, we know that it's an evolution of what they are um, and what the fans love about the the IP. Yeah, no, I can't wait. I can't yeah. wait to see. Yeah, it ba see back it. to keeping that core iconic trait canon that's important to the fans. We maintain that and ensure it's in place, both from a character standpoint and a visual standpoint. Yeah, and you know, on a weekly basis, we have. John and Jay and Casey and we have these calls and <laughs> they make sure we, we, we stay honest and because they're the closest to the IP, right? And so we want to make sure that we, um, you know, um, it, it's a, such a tight collaboration. And, yeah. um, and, and and Krista keeps us all in the line. I was going to say, yeah. she's up here yeah. doing that right now, like, okay, we're saying the right things, okay, <laughs> right. so far so good. It's a lot you to don't see, I, I have the... Um, uh, electric collars all activated. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, see, we went with this style. No, we didn't. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, cool. So, what are we? What are we about to? What are we? What are we going to see? What are we going to look at? Now we know. Sort of, we see the. We've, we've heard the culmination. Now we know what this is. The end result. Oh, we've got a wheel here. Or, or end result. I, I should clarify. Oh, this beginning. is this is concept art. Right. So we've we've taken you know the the artwork from the game. And, you know, Wilson especially um, has worked with the team to find a real timeless um, concept art is what we're going to yeah, see it's today. What, what the, this art is really the foundation that will then be used as the basis for all the different extensions. Because a character that's a 2D piece of art will look different in CG, will look different in a comic book. But you want a continuity, a cohesiveness for the franchise overall. And that's what what we've been developing. I think we can go to the next slide. This was really just talking about our Wheel of Awesome and uh, all the different extensions that we've been doing. I don't know if, Krista, before we jump in, you want to talk about those? Definitely. So we, you know, as, as described earlier, we have um, been developing a universe Bible. So taking the key narrative from the game and expanding it out. Um, John Zerplatten is here, our uh, head writer who uh, helped us out with that. And um, also, of course, events, which I mentioned earlier. We have a whole bunch of Awesome, rockin' online content. On Skybound Games. Skybound right? Games YouTube channel. Please check it out. Um, it's also up on Sumner's War YouTube. You can uh, check out Grindstone Workshop, my new favorite obsession here, guys. Yeah, it's so much the, fun. The actor in that thumbnail, really good looking guy. <laughs> oh, well, Super you may looking. recognize <laughs> that, that man right there. Um, if you want to check out Leo some more, he does make an appearance. And, um, you know, we're currently in development on a comic book, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll be um, digging into some merch. So that's what we've But that shows how on. our, you know, we really are, every, you, every, all the way around, all the spokes in the wheel are uh, in motion with this franchise. That's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot to do. With the intention of a global... Worldwide, timeless domination. 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 Yeah. Domination. Yeah. Domination. Domination is what we're, we're hiring. Minions. If anybody uh, <laughs> needs a job, cool, great. You've all been yep. summoned. <laughs> all right. Okay. okay. So, um, um, you know, beautiful art from the source IP. So we want to, um, you know, everything starts with, starts with source, and these are some of the beautiful characters that um, you know fans know uh, have fallen in love with. So next, uh, let me go to the next slide. And this is where we've evolved some of the characters. So, you know, from, uh, let's say, right to left, we have um, Elhile, we have Akia, we have Morgana, we have 
Durand, and we have Durand's monster, um, Bernard. So it's a little bit of a snapshot. We'll go in a little bit more detail afterwards. That is quite a visual change. Yeah, we'd like to think, you know, once you, when you, when, later on we'll talk a little bit about the logic behind them. You'll see them in relationship to the original characters, and hopefully you'll still see a relationship. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What are we looking at? Oh, this is, is this I the... I think uh, we can skip that yeah, one. I, th this, I think, okay. yeah. Okay. Skipping so, in. yeah, I mean, a little bit, um, you know, open the kimono a little bit here. These are some of the ideas that did not make it all the way through. Um, we start with the in-game El Hail. In this case, if you look at him, he's quite a um, pretty, um, you know, elfin character. Um, the robes are kind of a dark blue, so we want to make sure that we re um, retain some of that stuff. And you can see some of the explorations um, that we have from our amazing artist team from all over the world. The one on the left is actually um, closest to where we ended up, and it's by uh, Peter Chung, yeah. who Catherine... I worked with on Ian Flux. He's a creator of Ian Flux. He's yeah. an incredible designer, and uh, he's very particular about getting involved on too many projects, uh, especially if they're not his own. And he was so taken by Sumner's War and the potential of what we were doing aesthetically that he, he jumped onto the project, and he's just been... An no, it's been incredible amazing. Series. Pedigree too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think um, you know every line, every all the shapes. He it just instinctively got where the character needs to go, not to redraw the same thing, but where it needs to go. So we're really fortunate to have Peter, um, and then some other kind of a little bit of exploration. The one in the middle was um, by one of our um, main concept artists. Her name's April um, April Prime. April Is her Prime. Uh, April Prime? Um, she was actually inspired by some of the. Uh, traditional dra um, costuming of uh, Korean culture, so a little bit of the hanbok style. And then uh, on the right, uh, we have an artist from Singapore, so a little bit more out there. Mm. So you can see how this is, when we first start, it's a little bit wider, it's a little bit scattered, but you know, obviously we found the best artist we can yeah. to explore a little bit. Casey, what's, the, what's this feel like? To see like a, you know these characters that you've just been working with for so long, and then all of a sudden you've got four different versions from <laughs> premier <laughs> artists around the world, <laughs> casual, no big deal. No big deal. Um, I mean, for us, I mean, this game has been out for what four years now. Yeah. And Which is pretty fast, yeah. honestly. I mean, I don't play every day, but I, I play at <laughs> least you know four days a week. Uh, please delete right. that from. The <laughs> 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 no, but I'm used to seeing the little chibi 3D characters, yeah. right? And for me, Summoner's War was always just what I played on my mobile game. And then all of a sudden, the first time I, I remember still, <laughs> the first time I saw this, I was like, I shouldn't, I shouldn't <laughs> cuss on, <laughs> on stream, but it was, it was so shocking for me because it was so different. Mm. And at the same time, it was like, why not? Why, why can't it be like this? All right? And it was, such a, it was so awesome to see a different adaptation of what I'm so used to. And I mean, quite honestly. It still feels familiar, yeah, I would say. It, it looks very familiar. Like, for me, it's, it's, it's cool because I like looking for the similarities, mm -hmm. right? Because all of these characters, although very different, they all have similarities to the, the original. And for me, it was so interesting kind of finding that. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I mean, f it, was, it was awesome because you know, I, this is something I could never have pictured on my own. Um, and being in front of me, it's just, it's amazing like what's the p potential and what's the opportunities that could arise from this. And yeah, I'm, I'm like, the whole team is very ecstatic for, for all of the concept arts that, we're, that we've seen so far. And yeah, it's just amazing what these people can do. Like, yeah, I, I, I could definitely yeah. never yeah. do this. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, what else do we have here? Uh, uh, go to the next one. Oh, so, this, okay. Yeah, this is where we ended up. And, um, you know, I want to kind of, um, from the very beginning, we knew that um, how they summoned, how they used their books to call the creatures was something that we talked a lot about as a team. So you can see that we went down to, you know, when we evolve these characters, you know, we say gods in the details. Well, you know, the book is definitely a detail we cared a lot about. So there's, um, you, you can see the, the cover of the book, the color matches his outfit. You can see how the outfit is still related to the original in-game character in terms of overall color, but it's kind of evolved a little bit. We've kept some of the shoulder element. We've given him a little bit more um, kind of awesome, cool shin pads as if uh, summoning is something that's, um, you know, it's a powerful, dangerous yeah. thing, right? And then you can see, you know, as we take it to animation of film. It's not just color, it's material. So you can see how ornamentation um, on his shoulder, we're using um, you know, that pewter box uh, as an indication of what kind of material it's gonna be made from. On the left side, we even pointed out what the inside of his sleeves 
will be like. And then you'll see that there's a material palette there that's referring to Thai silk, which shimmers just a little bit different than normal mm -hmm. silk. So that's the level of detail that we are bringing to you come to us and do Summer's War, the characters. You know, I don't, I don't buy it. I don't think you care enough. <laughs> 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 but, yeah, yeah. But nothing can be left to chance because we're, we're creating the, the Bible, again, for the Truly. franchise, for the universe, that all of the different people who will start to work on this as each of the content elements take on lives of their own are going to go back and reference. And we need to make sure there's a consistency and continuity um, uh, throughout the whole universe. And that's why we need to spend the time now to get it just right. And I hope that you make this available online for all the cosplayers out there. <laughs> who are going to need right? all of these details. We've been talking about that for a long time. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're excited yeah. to see that. Yeah. Um, whoop, whoop, whoa, whoa. Whoa. I hope whoa. you enjoyed that. Back one more. Uh, don't blink. <laughs> so this was a little bit of a controversial character, Ikea. Uh -oh. uh, we really kind of pushed the boundaries a little bit. Um, our concept artists kind of tried a little bit, something a little bit more edgy. Um, you know, a little bit kind of a billowy skirt, gave her a tail, a little bit more of a, um, um, I just want to say edgy. I guess that's the description. That's of the right, right word. It's she the right is, word. She is yeah. badass. She's badass, yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And um, so, you know, we, we went through actually quite a few <laughs> rounds on this one. Yeah, we really had to find the right, right look for her. She's a powerful female uh, character, mm -hmm. and um, we, we wanted somebody that could stand the test of time and that, that we'd really feel proud of. Yep, and without losing the appeal. Without the losing the appeal, yeah. yeah. So you use the word edgy. What would you say sort of the overall tone you guys are going for is, or have you figured that well, out? Well, I, I think we should go to the f oh, next one okay. before okay. I talk about that, because that's, so this is where we ended up. Ah. And oh, we, wow. I th yeah, yeah, I think there's definitely a sex appeal. I think, um, you know, she is a demoness, a monster. So I think the fact that her eyes uh, don't have pupils um, don't have people in Iris um, kind of conveys that, but she's still very appealing. Mm. And um, if you look at the costume, um, you know, um, just like um, you know, a lot of the best film development, the devil's in the details, no pun intended. <laughs> and the stitching, the way the, the stitching kind of brings out her shape and her um, kind of like almost sinister quality, but in a subtle way. I think that's what we're going for. But at the end of the day, I think uh, if you go between this one and the original image, there's no doubt that it's the original IKEA that everybody um, you know know and love, right? I, the silhouette's the same. You yeah, yeah. And it's got the two wings, the, the two smaller wings on the on the head. Um, we, if you actually, we we can't do it here, but if you zoom into the detail on the on the on the feet, on the shoes, it's a it's actually met, uh, you know we put in a lot of thought. It's not just high heels. It actually grew organically from her yeah. as if it was part of her body. So, you know, a lot of thinking goes behind it. And, yeah, we all hope that it becomes cosplay one day. That's really <laughs> the... It will, for sure. <laughs> uh, my outfit is being made right now. Right, yeah. right, right. So in terms of the tone, we're, we're looking at 14-plus uh, age, kind of in the Harry Potter, Maze Runner type of storytelling that's fitting with the uh, audience for the game. Young Dark, as I call it. Young Dark. Yeah, I like oh, that. That's, I like that. Yeah. Young Dark. We'll use that. Guys, I want you to mark this moment that I came up with that term. It's okay. going in the universe Bible. <laughs> in the Bible. I'm, I'm going to yeah. buy the domain <laughs> name right now. <laughs> Young Contr Dark. Contribution. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, and then what's that? Oh, okay. This is this is one I was, I'm dying to hear because the... the, the uh, the concept art is so very so much from the original. I want to know sort of the process that went into this. Um, Rakan's definitely a, a tank, oh, yeah. um, massive body type. And so in the first round, we kind of explore, explored a little bit. Um, the one in the middle was also by April, and um, you know we evolved in a little bit, a little bit more upright and still powerful. Um, and the one on the right is by an artist named um, Robert Valley. Who's an extremely well-known um, artist? He, I think, he was nominated for. He was a nominee for an Oscar, Oscar last year. Last yeah, year. he's just an, a brilliant, uh, brilliant director, director, artist. And again, he was really excited about the property and wanted to take his pass. But he's got a very distinct style, and we wanted to play with that and see how far we wanted to push things early on. Yeah, absolutely. We kind of push a little bit, and then where we ended up with Rakan is this really powerful god, and um, you know, still recognizable as Rakan. Um, but you know, yeah, yeah. But you know, the it's meant to be not quite evil, not quite regal, but still quite a magnificent presence. It's he is a lion. So if you can see the studies that we did on how 
uh, we would express the face. If you see the one on the bottom left, you kind of see this kind of energy smoke coming from his eyes. You know, so, I mean, all these things that we're creating exist in a world where, you know, we, we see so much stuff. So we're always kind of looking at the details and how do we keep the overall impression of the character but still kind of push on the details a little bit. How many horn designs did you look at? That's crazy. I would say about 16 of both. Oh, my God. Easily, yeah. <laughs> there is There's a lot yeah. because, again, it's a... These are big decisions. Yeah. Even though everyone's small, they're all big because they're decisions <coughs> for the canon and the future of the of the property. Yeah. I mean, I feel like as a new fan, I'm just I'm just blown away by how much you care about every little detail. It's not like just make a character, put them on the screen. It's like no, everything has to be right. Yeah, you can see um, on the on the faces there. Most of them have this kind of like a like a beard that's tied. Um, it's tied like Vikings. Yeah. And so when we do these concept art, you know, it's not just what looks pretty. It's like, let's think about what the background is. What is the cultural influences? What's the inspiration? And then kind of bring that into it. And that's the only way you can get something that's uh, unique without mm -hmm. being just a copy of something we've seen before. Are, I, question, are the gauntlets organic or are they armor? Because I noticed in the other uh, concept art, some of them were attached and some of them look more like a... I think we end up something that's um, armor. It's armor. Yeah. It is armor. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. Sorry, I'm just technical no, question. No, no <laughs> Got to know. But back to what you're saying, every one of those choices, too, has uh, a narrative right. uh, component to it because we're thinking about, well, what, what is that saying about this character's personality? And again, that's why each of these choices are important. If those horns droop down, that may say something. Maybe he's a sad character as opposed to a powerful character with the horns up. Th it, everything has an influence. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And a place in the world, too. All yeah. right, here, this is a fun one right here. Right, Morgana, we our favorite. Morgana. We love Morgana. <laughs> you want to talk about Morgana? Maybe. Do you love her? Do you love her? <laughs> I Casey, love you love Were you dressed like Morgana? Morgana <laughs> is my new girl crush. She, she <laughs> is absolutely incredible. Like, look at that hat. And you'll see on, on the left here, we've got the in game. And where we landed, it, it really, you know, it, it fits really well. But she's, she's powerful and she's dynamic. And, you know, look at her red hair and, and, and how everything just kind of flows. Um, I she's, think in, she's in control. She is a powerful lady. Yeah. <laughs> You're a fan. We're surrounded by powerful yes. ladies. So I see. Yes, <laughs> we kind of had to give them, you know, a, a powerful okay, uh, stop. character. Okay, <laughs> stop. <laughs> oh, all right. Stop. <laughs> what? Dur is it Duran or Duran? How do you? Yeah, yeah I Duran said Duran. Duran. Yeah, Duran. Yeah. Duran. 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 I was going to make that joke. <laughs> uh, Duran. I was going to. That's should, why we work together. Yes. Yes. Duran. And so you know. Duran is pretty much, uh, how would you describe Duran? He's my boy. He's Your boy, the, He's okay. the guy. He's the guy who like, like leads you through, like he's the one who pops up the most and you kind of you get familiar with him, right? He's charismatic, he's yeah. the leading man. That's how we're just describing him, right? And often um, when we do the concept art, um, before that, we actually have this huge discussion about personality. Which actor is this character closest to? And I think we settled on uh, a little bit of Brad Pitt. A little. Oh, Durand uh, Pitt? <laughs> Durand, <laughs> yeah, Pitt. Durand Pitt, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but anyway, you know, extremely um, charismatic. Yeah, based, and on his, based on his Deadpool 2 role, two role obviously. Right? Uh, obviously, <laughs> obviously. And you can see where we evolved um, Durand. We've kept the color palette, you know, the teal cape, the gold the highlights, but everything else is quite evolved. And uh, I think um, a couple of things I would like to call out is um, the book and the armor. So as we... Um, kind of developed this for the franchise, for the IP, we really kind of focus on how to make magic, the act of casting a magic, summoning a monster, you know, make it cool and awesome because there's so much out there that has done that before. Can, can you tell us, kind of, can you describe it a little bit or is that spoiler territory? No, is it, is it okay? It? Yeah, I mean, okay. that literally goes back to the first discussion. It's like, you've got Harry Potter, um, you've got, um, in some ways, I mean, Star Wars with a uh, with a force. lightsaber in the Force, and they each have a really iconic gesture, not 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 just the visual, but how they go about fighting, how they go about casting a spell. So a lot of the discussion with you know John, uh, JZP and Jay and John and Casey and everybody was like, let's come up with our own unique iconic gesture. And so that's where really the discussions around books came about. And this is like, you think the other one was bad? We went through 30 iterations on every single character 
of where the book went. Was it comfortable? Is it too big? Yeah, and they pull it out. It's on the back. Yeah. And we uh, me, and then Paul, who's um, will be directing some of the stuff, and it's because um, he has to worry about the action. It's like, how do, does he? pull the book out and summon a monster from it? Is it a natural gesture? Is it going to be awesome? So some of what we were trying to get at is it should be as cool as a gunslinger. Yeah. Right? That's what those we're those cosplay for. poses, man. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's what we think about. So you can see how the book is strapped on. It's in a comfortable place where you can access it quickly. You can imagine the book flipping open and the monster comes out. And, th and then you can imagine a lot of kids being influenced by that in a really positive way for future summoning books, right? Wink, Absolutely. wink, nudge, nudge. Yeah. Yeah. Educational Good? initiatives. Yeah. And <laughs> oh. uh, Steve, no, no, no. everybody. Come on, guys. <laughs> we'll cover you. Come on. Um, and then the armor really is like, you know, how do we make it so that it's not just this lame magic poof and that's it. I mean, it's dangerous. It's powerful. That's kind of why, you know, we put armor on his arms. That doesn't really explain the legs. But the legs are just cool. Sometimes it's just cool. It's fighting. Yeah. Well. It looks, looks cool. awesome. Yeah, he's there's tiny cool. monsters too. They bite the ankles. That's yeah. right. They're like <laughs> ankle biting monsters <laughs> to protect them. So, you know, that all gives us um, reason to really evolve the outfit so that hopefully you can still see it's Duran, yeah. but it's an evolution of Duran. Um, and then when we go into 3D, when we, um, you know, take this into film, yeah, you're um, thinking it's so many even steps more awesome. It's wild. We're thinking big. We're thinking, thinking we've huge. got a five-year strategy here. Um, I, we're running a little short on time, so I just kind of want to cruise through these other ones, but let's just see what we've got. Okay. Degora. Degora, in-game. Awesome concept art for what we're going to do with it. Um, the writing on Degora actually means something. We're not going to tell you what it means. Oh. Yet. But um, it, there's meaning behind it. That's not um, graffiti. Season two, episode three, everybody. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. And what else? Who else? Oh, Bernardo. One course. of our favorites. Classic. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Giant, regal, um, you know, griffin, but still very powerful. So um, definitely something that you can, hopefully with the colors and stuff, you can see how it's related to um, Duran. Yeah, he's the poster boy, right? I think that's good. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And then next up. Oh, yes, of course. The map. Cool. Um, <laughs> that is a map of the world, right? <laughs> yep. And then this is the, uh, where are we right here? Oh, the, the so you call, do you pronounce it Ragon? Ragon? Ragon. 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 I, I believe it's Ragon, right? Yeah. I think you're the, you're, you're <laughs> the, you're the official one, <laughs> you know, man. I don't man. know the name of, of <laughs> like some of the pronunciation. It's up to your imagination. <laughs> this day, I still don't know. <laughs> so I, sometimes I just say whatever I feel like. <laughs> I feel you. I've never said it out loud. Today was the first time. Okay. Ragon. Ragon. No. And then, of course... <laughs> The magic I believe concept. it's Ragan. I'm pretty Ragan. sure it's Ragan. Okay, what he <laughs> said. <laughs> Castle. Okay, uh, so besides characters, we're developing the world as well. This is where um, one of the characters come from. Uh, Taihan? Yes. yes. Yep. Taihan. So I see um, uh, part of the world, a region part of the world. And so his castle is kind of incorporates these kind of ice crystals. Next. And then I think that's all we're going to share today. Oh, that's oh, all yeah. we're sharing today? Yeah. All right, guys, okay. calm down. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> amazing. Amazing. It's super cool, not right? just to see it and know what we are going to you know, come to expect, but, but just to like, hear the insight behind everything and the development, how much care went into making all of this, and you know, how cool it is for you to see it all yeah. go from a polygon to a fully fleshed out world, a full evolution. Uh, and you are going to have your hands very full wrangling all of the kittens. <laughs> yeah, I bet. Uh, but thank you <laughs> for sharing. especially. <laughs> well, and we also have uh, Kylie. We've got a great team. We have yeah, an yeah, amazing we've got team. Yeah, that are Anna. all helping us. At Kylie, Anna, um, everybody's out here in the audience here. We've got just all. a fantastic franchise team. We couldn't do it without you guys. Thank you. Thank you for your efforts, and thank you for sharing it with all of us. Uh, any clothing, closing thoughts you want to share with the audience out there? <laughs> Download the game. Go play yeah. Summoner's War. Go play War. Summoner's War. Get yeah. ready. Me too. It's gonna get Go big. check it out on, on the conference floor. We've got an amazing activation, incredible booth. Uh, we're really proud of this partnership. We couldn't be more fortunate to work with the Come To Us team. They have been awesome. So thanks, Likewise. you guys. You guys are just Thank as you. awesome. Oh, Not more well. awesome. <laughs> we're all awesome. Everybody in this room is awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's yeah. awesome, everybody. Thank you, Skybound. Thank you, Come To Us. And thank you guys. Thanks for tuning in. And uh, stay tuned. More to come from Gamma Ray Live.